Okay, so the first thing we're going to go over is using the Core 360 belt to train good diaphragmatic respiration. So as soon as somebody inhales, we want to see 360 degrees of expansion all the way around the waist. So I'm going to cue Arik to inhale all the way around the belt and to try to feel his abdominal wall expanding on all aspects around his waist. So if he inhales from the side, we want to see the two points moving away from each other, anterior and posterior. From the front, we want to see them moving anterior and a little bit laterally. We also want to see that the logo moves straight anteriorly. So if you look at the ohm track sensor, as soon as he inhales, we want to see the amplitude on the graph increase because we want that expansion to occur as soon as that inhalation occurs, not delayed. If he's a chest breather and starts his breath too high and doesn't get that diaphragm working, we're going to see a nice flat line showing us that we need to get our clients to work on initiating it a little bit better with their diaphragm. Okay, so now we're going to talk about training intra-abdominal pressure in this basic sitting position utilizing the Core 360 belt. So now this is more of a push and the cue is going to be to push the belt away from you in all directions. Because when we utilize our diaphragm for postural stabilization, we're going to see that same 360 degree expansion. So when you're looking at your clients, you want them to feel that they're pushing the belt away in every direction and they should be able to feel the belt coming back at them. And then what we want to see is the same thing as Arik pushes, we see the front points going out anterior laterally, and from the back side we want to see the same thing as he creates that intra-abdominal pressure, the front and back points are going to move away from each other. So if you come back around, so now we need this intra-abdominal pressure to occur just prior to movement and to adding load. So if you look at the graph, when he creates pressure, it's going to just be a flat line. So we know he's kind of pre-pressurized and he's ready for adding load. If we give him the weight, we want to see that as soon as he lifts that weight, we get a little bit higher increase on the graph because this demand is creating more demand for core stabilization or trunk stabilization. If he had a hard time doing this, he might be able to get the graph up, but as soon as he adds load, you would see it drop. Okay, so now that you know how to use the belt to train respiratory function and postural function of the diaphragm separately, we're going to now bring it together. Because in function during our daily activities or sports or fitness, we need to be able to utilize our diaphragm to keep the postural stabilization but also maintain good diaphragmatic breathing. So if you have a low load, and for instance, Arik was carrying just like a 10 pound uh, dumbbell or a bag of groceries, He's just going to need a little bit of postural stabilization so he can bring the line up to that 200 point on the graph. And now he's going to need to bring his diaphragm down further so we want to see the graph go up and down just coming back to that point of postural stabilization at the 200 mark. So the 200 number isn't important but it's just that he's maintaining the pressure and he can get a good diaphragmatic breathing curve. Now if he has a heavy load, like if he decided to pick me up and take me out of this room, He's going to have to have more demand on his diaphragm for postural function, so he won't have as much left over for breathing, so the graph is going to be a little bit shallower, but he should still be able to get a little bit of that diaphragmatic breathing curve and maintain the postural stabilization as long as he's not maxed out.